There we go. Herbal intercourse is optional. I've missed this one, man. Oh. Mids watch guys, welcome. Uh, verbal intercourse is optional is one of those classic mental models. It's been in the red pill forever. This one's what, eight years ago? Eight years ago, jeez. Add this one. It's more of a meta. There's not really a relationship thing to break down, but there is an alternative viewpoint. Typical, like 48 laws of power for every, every rule. There's always like, well, on the other hand, and so you're like, well, how am I supposed to, to know what to do here if half the time everything's got a contradictory position? Well, it's, the point is you got to use your brain. Things apply until they don't. So without further ado, verbal intercourse is optional. Uh, the matters we discuss here are all about creating sexual options by becoming a better man. It's about developing the mindset of abundance and embracing the fact that you have control of your life if you put in the work. It's also about realizing your wife has similar control. To rehash everybody's favorite example, your wife has control whether or not she's receptive to your want for sexual intercourse, aka fucking. You may be married and shared some vows, but you simply do not own her body. If you initiate sex and she gives you a hard no, you back off and play it cool, that's just how it works. The journey is not about forcing anybody to do anything they don't want to do, quite the contrary. You can only control yourself, and your job is to work on yourself and make it clear that she and put yourself in a point where she cannot fathom saying no to such a high value sexual man. There's a sidebar and it's the instruction manual for the assembly of such a man. Read the instructions before attempting to reassemble yourself. But there's some good news for you. The rules cut both ways. To the beginners, we give the advice that you should simply shut up as you work to internalize these concepts. Stop engaging the emotional chaos around you until you learn how to manage yourself first. But when you begin to establish this frame, your wife feels it and is jarred by it. She will attempt to engage further to test your resolve. You don't need to engage. However, what do you do when your wife persists and chases you around the house with her raging emotions trying to initiate verbal intercourse, aka talking? It's simple. Give the hard no to her interactions. If you don't want to have a conversation, say, I'm not having this conversation, leave the room. If she persists and continues to follow you around the house, demanding you speak while ignoring your hard no, Remove yourself from her presence by physically leaving the house. Go for a walk, go to the store, better yet, go to the gym. When your wife gives no to her sex and leaves the bedroom, do you follow her around the house with a raging erection, trying to jam it in whatever orifice she's left uncovered? I'm betting she wouldn't be too fond of that. And if she is, then maybe you should have just tried that years ago. So until you're both worth fucking, she has every right to say no to sharing in sex. And until you think she's worth conversing with, you have every right to say no in sharing the conversation. But now you're at a stalemate, right? Wrong. Your self-improvement will break the stalemate. As you build the body of a man who's worthy and possesses a strong frame, she'll want to engage with you sexually. And in return, with time, you'll want to converse with your now sexual wife who gives off a wonderfully feminine air, even during the simple talks. At least until the next shit test. So for the benefit of both you and your wife, break the stalemate, and get to work, read and lift. So I always like this one where it's like equating uh, a, a, a girl chasing you around the house, wanting to emote and talk and talk and talk. The same way as like a guy with an erection chasing his wife around the house, wanting to have sex and sex and sex. No means no. And it's good because everybody understands. I think I've talked to you about it before in a previous episode. Uh, relationships is largely about uh, an exchange of sex for validation. Ideally her validation and you getting sex, but you know, and I mean, there's not much more to say about it. It's 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 pretty boilerplate, very red pill, nothing fancy about it. It's a simple concept. Everybody should understand it. It's actually one of the least offensive ones we have. So like if, you, if this is too much for you, then I don't know what to tell you. You should stop watching now. I mean, leave it on silent. Watch the rest of the video in the background. But uh, Jack tends in with a bit of comes in here with a bit of a counter argument. He's like the men who have to actively remember this almost definitely don't have a strong enough frame to consistently manage the inevitable response which is as you described, the woman chasing you around the house. The analogy to a woman's sexuality is a man's attention. The basic transaction in female to male relationships is men trading attention and women trading sex. Every type of interaction follows this. Little boys tease girls they actually like the most. 
High school boys tolerate the shitty rom-com movie to get a hand job in the backseat of the theater. College boys put out, or uh, yeah, get put in time to throw keggers so the cute sorority girls come by and so forth and so forth. So women typically react to undesirable, beha undesirable behavior, undesirable attention by shutting down sex. When your wife would observe the blue-pilled version of you and took stock of the lumpy, slothful, passive person she called a husband, is she going to be attracted to that? No. No. Is she going to respond watching you waste so much attention on video games, on junk food with sex? No. It would be nice if women could communicate this, if they could plainly state, look, you're acting like a loser, and I don't like losers, but they can't. That kind of overt communication is not what they're used to, it's not what they're wired for. But they can't, they can't, they can't. All they can do is nag that you play video games while they do chores, and then when you do some chores, wondering why she still doesn't want to have sex. I know I need to live for me, but somebody needs to tell me how to do that. Because what happens if you communicate it overt? Our egos could take it, but if they said, you're acting like a loser, please engage in some attraction advancing and have activities instead, even if they have nothing to do with me, Anyways, but yeah, like instead of that, the women try and overtly communicate. It says something like, we're not having sex until you say, fill some condition that has nothing to do with sex. Chore play, right? And even some blue pill betas would consider that weaponizing sex and a damaging ultimatum, which technically it is. It's another reason you can't be overt with these things because now, now it turns into an ultimatum. Now it turns into a demand. Men are bad at covert communication and women are bad at overt communication. So realize when red pill men are instructed to withdraw all attention while their wife's acting undesirable, you're advising covert communication that they're clearly very bad at. This is why we talk so much about covert contracts while we're trying to speak covertly and then getting upset when our wives don't respond. Of course they don't respond because we're bad at it. This is why so many guys are stumbling in here saying their wife shot them down, they left the bed and tried to do something else and their wives accused them of being butthurt. That's why it goes poorly as a woman saying no video games, no sex. Both situations, the, was, the woman being overt, the guy being covert, are just inept feelings, create manipulation, hostility, and confrontation. So, should you withdraw your attention if your wife's behaving in a way that you doesn't deserve it? Sure. What you should not do is clumsily bring your attention from 100 to 0. Your wife is not entitled to your attention, but... She is entitled to feel upset when you suddenly withdraw your attention after a pattern for years of giving it to her unconditionally. Now, if you just swallowed the red pill, as I said, you would not have the frame to deal with an upset wife who is just pissed that you're changing the rules. Because you are, in fact, changing the rules. The reason why a husband is not entitled to sex with his wife on demand unconditionally is not a controversial statement because this is accepted conventional wisdom. A wife is not entitled to get her husband's attention on demand unconditionally is not accepted conventional wisdom. Your wife and everybody else in your life, including you until just now, thought that was the rule. This is what upsets people, just like no video games or no sex comes across as changing the rules. But a sustained pattern of undesirable behavior resulting in a loss of attraction and thus lack for desire and attention for sex, those are pretty conventional rules too which is why a marriage counselor would completely support a wife who painstakingly described her lack of libido as being the result of all of her husband's loser actions, but would scold a wife who gave her husband the idea that video games are no sex. Ultimatum. This is why I typically advise against newly unplugged guys doing that hard no thing. Because it's going to come across as changing the rules and will piss off the wife for no reason. You're basically telling her you were complicit for a long time, and then I read a couple things by Rollo Tomasi, and now I'm an alpha male, you know? Look, you're entitled to withdraw your attention, and there's countless ways you can do it, over time, much less confrontationally, and with a lot less damage done to your marriage in the process. The classic method is not explicitly withdrawing your attention in direct response to undesirable behavior, but gradually adding acting activities into your life, and they draw your attention everywhere, because what are the likely outcomes of those two scenarios? You know, the wife. Do you want to get frozen yogurt, then watch some Netflix? You, you're like, nope, because you didn't fuck me last night. Or, do you want to get frozen yogurt and watch some Netflix tonight? It's like, nah, some other time. I got a softball game tonight. So yes, for unplugging guys, your wife will turn you down for sex and you'll be tempted to leave the room, withdraw your attention, 
in a direct response to it. So don't, don't, don't do that. Take a deep breath. Keep your shit together. At that very moment, continue to do whatever it is you are currently doing. If you are watching a shitty TV show, finish the show. Use that time to take stock and ponder how things got here. Spending your evenings watching TV shows you don't like with a woman who doesn't want to fuck you doesn't seem that good. Start thinking about a plan to change that situation and what kind of goals would indicate you're succeeding in that plan. Excuse yourself, go to the bathroom, go to another room, start writing down some notes for that plan or however it is you want to do it. The next morning, wife may want to kiss you goodbye before you go to work. Maybe she does that. And you're going to be upset once again, wondering why she gets attention and intimacy while you get nothing in return. And then she'll text you insane shit during the day, getting pissy if you don't promptly text her back and acknowledge you'll do everything on the honeydew list. Once again, ponder how you got here and come up with a plan to get yourself out of it and then proceed normally until your wife, you know, responds. So not answering texts just to piss her off and have her accusing you of being an asshole, it's not the best way to do it. Not answering your texts because you're busy, totally different. Now, are you an asshole simply because you didn't answer them on demand? Of course not. Do you have to frame to resist her calling you an asshole without losing your cool, without defending yourself, without blurting out that maybe you respond to her text if she put out once in a while? For a lot of us, a lot of those new guys, the answer is still no. Because your wife will ask you to do some annoying errand and you'll say you have a softball game and she'll get pissed off. You know, pissed off, something else is a higher priority than her. But those are easy enough shit tests to deal with because you'll be arguing about softball and she'll never have have to hear anything even remotely close to, well, maybe if you suck better dick, I'd be home. You're not entitled to my attention. Instead of that, you're just going to simply act over a sustained and gradual period in a way that changes the rules without any needless conflict. So a summary on this one. I've actually talked about this since like the very beginning on here. I call it the gym bag routine, and it's one of those... For a lot of guys, they don't understand this. And so you give them a nice, simple experiment. And obviously the first part of taking the red pill, join the gym, you know, start working out, take care of your health. And so you plan your gym time, say five o'clock. Take your gym bag, tack all your stuff in there, throw it by the door. 4.55 rolls around. Go and try to sleep with your wife. Now I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is like from a dead bedroom scenario. She shoots you down for it. You say, okay, and then you go to the gym. You were already going at five. And if she does, then yeah, you know, fool around, have some pillow time and then go to the gym. But the idea here is you have to train yourself to always have something better to do. And then what you're doing is you're offering the wife the first chance to have your attention, your commitment, your commitment, your validation, you know, attention, commitment, comfort, all that stuff. And if she doesn't have it, you're not gonna sit there in a huff because you waited till 11 o'clock at night so you could finish watching The Tonight Show or whatever the hell you did, and then make a move, and now you just have to sit there stewing about it for the next half hour until you pass out. Now you're like, well, I gotta go. Got a baseball game, going to the gym, catch you when I get back. You leave with a smile, you come back with a smile, but you establish verbal intercourse isn't optional. And that's all I got for you guys. Cheers. Cheers.